Hey there. Hey Joel, how are you? Oh, very good. I love that song, that intro music. It's very like calming. I could, yeah, I could listen to that all day while coding. It feels like yeah. it just sets you in the perfect mood. Yeah. Oh, hello everyone. Welcome to the live stream. We have some folks peeking in from LinkedIn. We have Twitch, and I think we're also live on YouTube. So welcome to the live stream. My name is Joyce, <laughs> and I have a guest today, Joel. Joel, do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, I am Joel Lord. I uh, work as a developer advocate for MongoDB, uh, so the uh, database or a database as a service platform. Uh, so we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that later today, I guess. So. Yeah, and I'm Joyce. I'm from the Postman side, um, and I am in developer relations over in San Francisco. And if you thought you were going to get Arlami, then surprise. <laughs> <laughs> I'm filling in last minute. Uh, Feel free to ask Arlami what happened to him and why he can't make it. Um, but uh, I'm I'm very happy to be here. Um, I MongoDB is a very important like it's a very widespread tech, so I really want to learn about it. And Joel, I've met you before. I think we met on a ferry once in Canada. Um, so <laughs> exactly. like it's it's like being reunited to hack on something together. So this is going to be enjoyable. Welcome everyone. Absolutely. And where is everybody from? Let's uh, send a question. I guess there's a small delay, so we'll see your answers coming in or trickling in in, yeah, in a couple so of seconds. But Arlami is chiming in from Twitch. We have Sean chiming <laughs> in from YouTube. Um, I invited Arlami to stick around, but he didn't want to be mocked. So yes, uh, MongoDB <laughs> is awesome. I am looking forward to learning how awesome it is. Um, but also the other thing is like, or let me prepare for this stream. I don't exactly know what's going on. <laughs> so, um, but we are going to be working with Postman and MongoDB. We'll dive into that in just one minute. The first thing we start with though, is in case you missed it. So I'm going to cover some uh, of the latest releases in Postman. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And I am going to leave the chat up. Normally I take it down so we can really zoom in and see what's going on, but I don't think we're gonna need it entirely. There's only one new thing that Arlami tells me I should let everyone know about. So I'm logged into Postman right now. I'm going to find a public workspace. So I'm gonna search for MongoDB and the first one is by your team there, Joel. Yes. <clears throat> so I'm gonna click through to this public workspace. And I'm going to drop a link. I'm going to go to the workspace. I'm going to drop a link to the workspace here. And if anybody wants to join me there, you'll see what is new. Let me zoom in just a little bit more. Whoa, it's too zoomed in. I'm in. <laughs> that what is new is presence. Do you know what presence is? That's so cool. I, I, I think I, I see my presence. Um, not, not, there it is. Yeah. So anybody that wants to hop into this, uh, workspace, I'll be able to see you and I'll be able to see you creeping on me. So I'm actually, Ooh, ooh somebody's shy. Somebody left. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm actually zoomed in really hard. Let me zoom out just a scotch. But yeah, if you want to join me here, you can see who's active. End zone is here. So it's kind of like um, if you work with Google Docs and seeing the little presence icon, 
seeing like who is present in this workspace. So it's kind of exciting. I think it's a really cool application for um, live streams because then if we're hacking on something all together, then we get to, oh, there's Sean. Oops, Sean's shy, Sean deked out. I'm trying to see if I can live update my profile picture so that to change it. Ah, okay. We have people chiming in from India, Argentina, Pakistan, DRC. What's that? What's DRC? Oh, and then if there's more, okay. Now people are coming in. Now they're getting it. Oh, that's because the link was so far back. So yeah, come hang out in the MongoDB workspace. Um, so I think I'm gonna be working a little bit in um, the MongoDB realm, and then you're gonna be working a little bit in the Postman realm just to keep things interesting. Mm -hmm. So throughout the stream, on the Postman um, portions of the stream, if you're popping into this public workspace, we will be able to see you in a non-creepy way. <laughs> Very not creepy. That's borderline scary. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'll stop sharing my screen. That was one very minor thing for in case you missed it. Presence in public workspaces. I think it's kind of nifty and fun. Um, but on to the meat, on to the meat of the stream. Joel, can I ask you to tell us what we're doing today? So, because uh, you haven't done your homework, right? <laughs> I haven't done any homework. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, so the goal. So recently, we've just released uh, what is called the data API. So basically, it's a way to access. Um, MongoDB's data directly from a REST API. Uh, so, uh, you know, MongoDB's data is relatively access or easy to, to access. There's a lot of developer tools that are, makes your life very easy. Uh, there's drivers for most of the main languages, but uh, but we've added this feature, which is great for testing what's inside of your data. To uh, if if you need to use uh, your data inside curl, for example, or inside a bash script, uh, maybe you don't have you know there's no driver for that. So using a REST like API makes your life a lot easier. Uh, so really, what's what we're going to look at today is that. Um, so we've added the uh, the Postman collection. Uh, as you've already shown. Um, so we'll kind of take a look at that Postman collection and see how we can visualize some data inside of uh, inside of a, a MongoDB cluster. So that's kind of the goal today. Um, what I was thinking is that I'll, I'll guide you through the process of maybe creating that, uh, that uh, Atlas cluster, uh, putting in some sample data, and then, uh, and, and then you can help me to try to um, work with the, uh, with the data API collection. Yeah, so in the chat, does everyone know what MongoDB is? I assume everyone does because it's a pretty like widespread tech. But um, let me just share my screen again real quick and um, I'll, again, just zoom in heavily. So your original collection was MongoDB Atlas and this is to control like your MongoDB information, like your MongoDB account, your team, all that kind of stuff. But the data API is to manipulate the actual data that you have stored in MongoDB, it sounds like. Exactly, exactly. So MongoDB Atlas is uh, the cloud offering by MongoDB. So a lot of people are probably uh, already familiar with MongoDB. If not, it's a NoSQL database uh, that where, you know, it's, it's a database. <laughs> Let's give it at that for now. Um, and MongoDB Atlas is the cloud offering. So to manipulate, to manage, to administrate your, um, your clusters and and all of the everything that runs inside Atlas, basically, uh, you can use the uh, management API for it, or the MongoDB uh, Atlas collection that you see there, and for software developers to mit to manage everything that has to do with the actual data inside of the cluster, then you would use the data API. Okay, um, and then we do have Willie Geertz in the chat, uh, you know, being provocative, um, SQL versus NoSQL. I think. Uh, in the very, very early days of NoSQL, there was a little bit of controversy, but nowadays it's like there's, uh, the adoption is pretty much um, evident. Um, okay, so let's, how do we how do we get started? Let me stop sharing my screen again. Joel, please lead the rest of this <laughs> stream. Well, why why don't you try to create your own account? I'll I'll let's keep your keep your screen open, okay. Okay. and I'll I'll just guide you through the process. Maybe uh, so if you if you head to uh, cloud.mongodb.com, okay, you me, should be able to see. Out. 
And there is that too should... small? Should I move the chat off the screen? It's, I find it a, uh, somebody small. asked to remove the chat. So I don't know. Okay. Okay. Akash, yeah. Okay. I'll go ahead and remove the chat, but I'll still keep an eye on the chat. So if you have questions or you want to help with anything, um, just go ahead and chime in and I'll keep a side eye on the chat. All right. Uh, all right, so if you click sign in, you'll be able to uh, create your account. And uh, from there, you'll have your MongoDB Atlas account. So that's as easy as that. OK, so should I just log in? I don't have an account yet, so sign up. Sign up. OK, sign up with Google. Uh, if you have a Google account, that's even easier. OK. Hi, John's work alias. Yeah. Thanks for stopping by. Okay. All should right. I read? Should we read the terms and privacy? You should policy? always read it. Read it. Okay. Uh, but, you, but you can trust me. I'm, okay. I'm telling you, it's it's everything trust is safe. Trust Joel. Accept. Uh. Accept. <laughs> okay. So All right. welcome. And and then that's it. You've you've got your account. Um, okay. So you should be redirected. Welcome to Atlas. What are your goals? Uh, I guess you can just skip all of that, um, and we'll just. Uh, I can't see I, the, the the bottom oh, right corner, so I don't know if you have a, a next button uh, or a skip for. But it's a finish. But I think it's prompting me okay. to actually do something. So, what type of application? Uh, hmm. Not blockchain. Uh, let's say uh, other. Okay. <laughs> other I, I. Okay. What is your preferred language? French. Okay. Uh. <laughs> Let's look for French, French Canadian. Yeah, pro. Okay. All right. That's so I'm going to hit finish behind our heads right here. Actually, no, it's not letting me. It must prompt other. I'll say demo. Okay. Now I'm clicking finish behind my head. All right. So now you can create your first uh, cloud database. Uh, so if you, and, and there's a free tier that is available. So you can click on the free at your right. Okay. Click on create. And now you can decide where you want to host your database. You can host it on one or many different cloud providers at once, which is kind of cool. Um, so let's just keep the defaults for now. Uh, so it'll be deployed on AWS, uh, North Virginia. I'm not sure why you don't have Oregon as a default, but it doesn't matter. Should I change it? Uh, no. Well, it doesn't matter. Again, <laughs> okay. so uh, that's the nice thing about it. You can deploy it everywhere and it just runs exactly the same. Uh, really, to the end user, it doesn't change anything. Should I do You can. OK, I'll just leave it on. I feel like the website knows best. Let's leave it. <laughs> okay. uh, and then just click Next, because uh, you can keep the default. You can, we'll keep the free tier for now. Um, and so we'll, I'll we'll go ahead keep the and name Cluster Zero. Create so. Cluster Zero. Um, and it's the free. Okay. Ten dollars. How far okay. will that get me in cloud? Uh, well, if you if you have a like a good decent tier uh, paid tier database, it'll cost you about thirty dollars per month. Uh, so it's you know uh, it's not that far, but it's still not not too bad. Okay. Um, but if somebody really wants some credit, just you know uh, hit me up on Twitter afterwards. I can probably arrange something. Mm -hmm. Okay, at a later just... date, we will, yeah, tweet Joel Lord, <laughs> Joel underscore underscore Lord, and um, you'll, maybe you'll get some credits. So in the go. future, we need to rename our cluster, Bob. Uh, I think it's too I... late once we've too created late. it. Too late. Yeah, okay. but that's All a great right, so idea. I'm not going to invite anybody. Okay, skip. Okay, skip. All right, so next thing you'll need to do, uh, one of the thing, uh, so it's it's being deployed at the moment. So one of the things that uh, an earlier version, so if you've used MongoDB like version three uh, and, and older, uh, it, there was some security issues at some point. Uh, so they've changed it a lot and now it's like fully, everything is blocked by default. So you need to actually create a user to give access to uh, to anything uh, inside of your database. So let's let's just go and create a user you could use certificates as well. And there's a lot of uh, different advanced security features, but we'll keep it very simple for now. Okay. Uh, so just give it a username. Uh, let's call it Postman. And we'll let's... put Bob here. How about this? There you go. Okay. 
and password. Um, you know, you can try password one, two, three, but I think it'll block that one. So, <laughs> or you could use your password manager to create something more secure. At, will I need to remember this password for later? Uh, yes, you do. So, so use maybe Postman. <laughs> okay. Create user. Yes. And we've got a user, so we can now access the database. And the next thing, another security feature, as you scroll down, you'll see that nobody's allowed to access the cluster at the moment. So you need to specify which IP addresses are actually allowed to uh, access this cluster. Oh. So you could click the Add My Current IP Address. Um, will to this add reveal it? Your, it will reveal it, so don't. Um, <laughs> or you could uh, enter What's the IP it? address 0.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0. Um, and that will access it from anywhere in the world. So Ooh. it's not the best secure way to do it. It will actually send you an email saying, hey, you know, maybe you want to you know, revisit that decision. Uh, but uh, but, but it, it's kind of useful when you want to explore some things and, and kind of poke around with the API. So, so, you're, so allow you're explicitly allowing access traffic coming from these IPs. And in this case, it's going to be everything. Exactly. OK. And uh, click oops. on add entry. Add entry. And you should be good to go. All right. Finish and close. Access Congratulations. Rules. Okay. Go through your database. And I think it's the perfect timing. I think oh, not quite yet. Um, so as you can Did see right now. Did I do right that now, so slowly that like it took the three to five minutes? <laughs> that <laughs> well, was I'll, really quick though. But it's it's not fully finished apparently. Uh, there's still that blue banner at the top that goes in. So what's going on right now behind the scene is that it's actually uh, deploying three different virtual machines, deploying MongoDB on each one of those machines, configuring everything. Um, and it's three machines. It's a it's a full Atlas cluster. So that means that you'll have data that will be replicated across all three clusters. So if one of them goes down for some reason, the other two can actually, or one of the other two can pick it up until uh, the third one just comes back online. So all of that is taken care of for you. You don't have to really deal with any of that. Uh, but yeah. it's nice to know that that's what's going on at the moment. So we do have some uh, mischief being made in the chat. So yes, Endzone, feel free to add your random keys <laughs> once we see what the um, where where the access point is, and then Rex one, it will allow all of us yes because we what we we didn't dedicate certain IPs to have, allow traffic. Okay. Yeah, exactly, and that will that's you know something that you would do on a stream because we'll delete that cluster at the end, but probably not something you want to do in production. So yes. something to okay. keep in mind. Okay. Um, okay, so the cluster is ready. So you've got a full cluster. Now, if you go to the three dots next to the cluster, um, right at the top, cluster zero, connect, da, 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 three dots. One thing you can do is load sample data. Okay. And that will create, uh, as it says, it'll just create a sample data set. So it'll add a bunch of different data. Uh, it's, it's data sets that you can use to explore. So why don't you click on load sample data set right now? Because it does take a few minutes. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but it, it'll add a bunch of different things. There's a, like a movie collection where there's just a list of movie. There's uh, collections that use uh, geo, geo JSON data. So you can, you know, explore, uh, I think it's shipwrecks uh, around the world. So you can plot those on a map. There's, there's a lot of different sample data that you can use to explore MongoDB. Uh, so it gives you kind of, of something to play with. Because if you just open up this database and there's nothing in it, it's like, OK, where where do I get started, right? It's, <laughs> you kind of need something. So the whole goal of having a database is to have some data to uh, explore. And it's nice that you have fun data sets, too. Um, I wonder if it's because I clicked, I wanted to learn MongoDB in the registration process, and it like it should it should give me customized data sets. <laughs> it should. That would be nice. That would, that would be a nice feature. And I'll definitely submit that to our product team. Yeah. Uh, but it's always nice, uh, fun to play with uh, data sets anyways. Um, so this will take a few minutes. So what I'll, I'll try to do right now uh, is if you want to share me your email, I'll actually add you to another project that already has that uh, that data set, and then we can just jump into it 
okay. start taking a look into it. I messaged you my email address. Got it. And we still have people chiming in. Welcome. If you just joined us, we are, well, I just set up a MongoDB account. I deployed a cluster, a cluster called Cluster Zero. I am currently loading a sample data set, um, but this might take a while depending on how big that data set is. So I think Joel is going to do some magic, some internet magic. Yeah, so you should have an email now uh, with, uh, with an invitation to join my cluster. Okay, so off screen, or should I just pull this on screen? Oh, do you really want to put your emails on screen? That's okay. That that one is good. It's fine. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, so, so I just received how this many email. emails do you have in your inbox? That's... Not, don't look at that. Don't look at that. <laughs> uh, so it looks like but, you've invited. And that's no, that's the warning message that you got uh, saying oh, yeah. that you've you've allowed access to to anywhere, that's like right. to everybody. So be careful about that. Um, yes. Oops. Hold on. Why I have this problem where I can't drag across two screens very well. It's a uh, yeah. That's that's what happens when you're not used to work like with windowed, you know. Windowed. With, windowed <laughs> windows. Okay, so now I have the actual email. It's coming over. It's coming there over. There it is. <laughs> okay, so okay. You have invited me to join a project in yes. your organization. In my organization. Okay. Um, well, we have somebody that's very adamant to know what your headphone scenario is. What's your headphone model, Joel? Sony. <laughs> and I am not a head headphone nerd. Uh, it's a Sony XM3, I think. So something, something three. So I click through that yeah. email without having read it because I trust you, Joel. And Perfect. I auth with my same account that I used to create my account. So this should be the same account, correct? I didn't set up a separate account. That is correct. Oh, that's nice. So I can belong to multiple orgs? Exactly. So now okay. if you click on the upper left box, drop down, you see Joel projects. So that's a list of oh. my, well, the projects that you're part of. Uh, so you, you should have one as well. Uh, so Joyce's org right there. Okay. And for each project, for each org, you can have multiple projects as well. So in the, in the drop down right behind, uh, beneath that one, you should see the Postman stream project, which is the only one that I've shared with you. I have a bunch of them, but I've only shared or invited you to one of them. Okay. Um, and, and then you can have a free tier in each project. So, you know, if you want to run multiple free clusters, go crazy. Okay, nice. Um, so, so now we have the exact same cluster, also called cluster zero. Uh, I think, because I'm not very original with <laughs> my names. Um, and you have a, a sample data set already loaded for you. So you can see that on the, um, in the in the graphs there, there's four graphs. The one on the right says you've got 330 megabytes of data inside of your database. Okay. So if you click on Browse Collections, okay. that should bring you to the actual database are the databases. So you should have a, a bunch of databases called sample, 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 sample. So sample Airbnb, sample Analytics, sample Mflix. Uh, sample Mflix is the one that we'll try to use today. Under which one? And Oh, you're not allowed to. <laughs> Wait a minute. I should give you permissions. See, this uh, is the security um, that, uh, principle that you're talking about. You create a user, and then you only give them access to what they need. Yes, exactly. So what I'll do is that I'll give you full project owner uh, accesses. So now that should be done. So if you refresh the page. And Luce just called it out. It is a pain in the butt, says Luce. <laughs> but proves that security <laughs> is chef's kiss. Paraphrasing there. Hey, Luce. Uh, <laughs> yes, it is. But, it, but it's good to have everything blocked by default. Uh, I am not wow. someone, I must admit, as a software developer, I am not one to think security first all the time. Uh, so it's nice that MongoDB Atlas actually does it for me because uh, I yeah. don't have to worry too much about it. And Lily Garrett's, um also concurs that multi-org um, having being able to join multiple organizations and collaborate on multiple projects or specific projects rather um, is very luxurious. 
Yes, exactly. Especially for freelancers, as as was just mentioned, um, and even even inside of a single enterprise, we've we've got multiple different uh, organizations inside MongoDB uh, that we can join. Yeah. Well, look, it's our data. So, so yes, we've got data. If you take a look at sample Mflix, uh, you should see a bunch of collections. So if you're not familiar with MongoDB, we've got those are databases. Each side, uh, each database has uh, a collection of collections. Uh, MongoDB has collections too. Postman has collections. Exactly, <laughs> and uh, and those are equivalent to uh, tables in a in a traditional database. Okay. And for each movie, you'll see that we've got documents. So instead of records, those are called documents. And that's what a document looks like. So you've got uh, embedded objects inside of an object. So that's, it's really nice how you can really structure your data. Um, that's, you know, so, so if you're not familiar with, the, with MongoDB, it, it takes a little bit of getting used to when you come from a SQL world to kind of embed different things inside of a single big record. So instead of just having one you know, line in a table, you, you have like those things embedding embedded in others, uh, but you, you get used to it and it's a lot of fun to actually use. All right, and it looks like we have a newcomer. Naiden, welcome to uh, the Postman live stream. We have special <laughs> guest Joel from MongoDB. So two very, very popular technologies, welcome. Yes, okay. So yeah, I'm just exploring some of this data. I'm not familiar with this interface. Um, I feel like I've implemented MongoDB from like command line or just from like the pure code side, but this entire interface is brand new to me. So it's, well, that's not true. I did a live stream with Luce uh, <laughs> not long ago, but we were just, just scratching the surface. Yeah, no, I mean, the, the whole, uh, when I, previous to joining Mongo, MongoDB, I was used to use like that, that whole, uh, you know, Mongo database that you run either inside of a container or uh, install you locally on your machine. Uh, but using the Atlas cloud interface is just so much easier and everything is just there and it just works. Uh, so it's a lot less problems or a lot less hassle to, um, you know, to use it. And you were saying it's $30, um, like an estimated cost of $30 USD. Uh, I mean, like if you're going to be like, using it for production purposes? Yeah, I mean, there's there's a wide range of different clusters that you can use. Uh, why don't you go on Atlas, the button right on top, the kind of green one right there, Okay. Uh, and click on Create uh, to the right. There you go. And of course, we've used a free cluster. But if you look at Dedicated, and if you scroll down a little bit, you should be able to see uh, there, that's 54 cents an hour for that current setup. So if you scroll down a little bit more, uh, you should see what it gives you. So cluster tier is an M30. Uh, M30 is 8 gigabytes of RAM, 40 gigabytes of storage. If you need more, uh, you can just adjust everything there. You can specify, like you can go into a lot of details, like do you, you know, if you want to use SSD drives to make it faster, or if you want to use more RAM, more storage, and so on and so on. So if you click on that one, it should expand. There you go. Um, so it starts at eight cents per hour, and it goes to, well, you know, sky's the limit, <laughs> just like everything else in the cloud. Uh, wow. Also, fun thing, it actually, it'll actually, you can actually set it up to auto scale. Uh, so if you're afraid that, you know, that might not be enough, but if, if it needs to go, if it needs to, it will, it can actually move to the next cluster tier, uh, and you can con configure all of that from there. Yeah. I wouldn't even know what to, how to configure. So I'd probably choose some sort of like automated option. Yeah. A lot of people will just rely on the, uh, administrative ad admin team or DevOps team. <laughs> Configure those. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, but, but using the defaults is usually a good option, and and it's 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 meant to be, uh, you know, to, to be usable out of the box. So, so that's for okay. pricing. Okay. Um, all right. So let's let's do one last thing. Let's go to uh, let's let's can you cancel? Yeah, there you go. Yep. Uh, click on the data API on the left because that's what we want to take a look at today. We really want to export the data API. So I've mentioned uh, actually just before you click on it. <gasps> So let me just okay. refresh. It's probably because I'm streaming and there's like laggy, <laughs> laggy connection. Okay. There you go. So uh, just go back to databases before, please. Okay. Um, 
if you're if you're actually uh, programming, like if you want to create a, a Node.js backend, if you click on connect right there, uh, right next to cluster zero, yep, uh, you will have everything that you need to connect uh, to your database. So if you want to connect your application, the one in the middle, uh, connect your application will actually give you the, the code to connect your application. If you click on include, include full driver code example, it'll actually give you uh, all the code that you need to. So you can just basically paste this in uh, your Node.js uh, index.js file and you're good to go. Like it'll just work out of the box. Uh, so that's that's how you would traditionally work with any programming language. Uh, you can change the language that you want right over uh, in the number one. So you can switch to Python if you'd prefer. And same thing, you'll just get the language to connect your database and access to your uh, access your 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 database. Um, so it's it's kind of a, it's it's kind of easy to use. That's the way that you should go. But as I uh, said earlier, if you want to use it in Postman, or if you want to see your data in Postman, or if you want to uh, use your data in Bash, then there's no driver that you can use. So that's when you'll have to resort to uh, the REST API to be able to access your data. So that's what we'll try to do now. OK. It would be nice to see like a REST option that then just triggers like a Postman um, call or takes you over to like to do a Postman call. Uh, I've seen that before. It's not it's not a driver, but I've seen Folks There's a Rust of... option. Rust, not Rust. Rust. Um, okay. Who um, uses Rust? <laughs> Actually, there's a lot of people. I know, I know. Don't don't come at me. Okay, let me close this. So this yeah. is really cool. Like code okay. generation is is clutch for a lot of devs. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's you know, uh, I mean, I I use MongoDB all the time, but. I, I I never remember the syntax to connect to a database, so, so I just I just always copy it from there. Yeah. Um, and it's actually uh, it's it's when you start typing it in um, a GitHub Copilot VS Code Copilot whatever whatever it is like it'll just fill everything for you anyways. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. One of the questions that um, I get quite a bit is how do you connect to a database from Postman? And okay. of course, it's just going to be like. A rest call, but are, are we going to be doing that? That's exactly what we're going to do next. Okay. okay. So uh, let's let's uh, click on the data API to the left. Okay. So and actually, I think I'll I'll pick it up from here if, you, if you don't want, because okay. then uh, you can help me and guide me through yeah. uh, the process of uh, well getting that collection to work. Okay. So I'm going to take my screen off, and then I'm going to load Joel's on screen. There okay. it is. Yes. Perfect. Um, so I'm at exactly at the same place. So same cluster, because we were using a shared wow. project here. Uh, as you can see, I have a couple of more projects, but those were not shared with you. You didn't give me access to those. Not all of them. <laughs> uh, and I clicked on Data API. So I've got this uh, button here that says, well, enable the Data API. So that's kind of the first step. Uh, and I'll say I want to enable it for cluster zero. I'll enable it, and that will create all the endpoints and everything that I need. Um, and now I, in theory, should be able to use, uh, access all of my data directly from Postman. OK. Um, so let's, let's, the screen seems a little bit clustered. That's, that looks better. OK. Um, so yeah, so I guess the next step will be to uh, pull up the public collection and, and start playing around with it. Oh, it's the Postman time. Let's open yeah. Postman. Okay. All right. So I was already in there, but if somebody uh, wants to join us so that we can see their face in here, um, okay. I'm on my way. I, I, Let's I drop I'll, a link. I'll drop a link again. Okay. Come hang out in the um, MongoDB public workspace, and then we'll see your face. How do I find that workspace, uh, Joyce? Is there like an easy way to search for workspaces? Yeah. Top center. Like the big button that says yes. search postman <laughs> for collections. Yeah. MongoDB data API. Endzone, thanks for stopping by. OK. Uh, by MongoDB DevRel. So that's legit. It, is. it sounds official. It is very official. Ooh, look at all the people joining you in your public workspace. Look at that. Got Arlemi, got Oleg. There's a plus two. Wondering if that works. 
Yeah. That's actually really neat. Like I, <laughs> that's a fun, uh, especially for uh, for me who wrote the public workspace. Like it's nice to kind of take a look Get every now and then. And see. Yeah. Uh, someone is in there. Hey, <laughs> we have a question from LinkedIn user. Can I post yes. a message JSON payload from Postman to MongoDB Cloud and it creates a collection, a MongoDB collection, saves data in MongoDB, assuming Mongo has collection name created but no collection? Collection name created but no collection. Can you uh, create a collection using the data API? Well, we'll try it. Okay. We'll try it right away. Yeah. Let's, Challenge let's, accepted. Let's let's start by trying that. Okay. Um, so what's my first step? If I want to use the data API, you told me, someone told me, or let me told me to fork, right? Yes. Uh, so I should just click here and do Postman, demo stream. Yeah, if you want to follow along, you're welcome to, besides just showing your face, feel free to just show your face. But if you're trying to follow along and learn something, you can um, do exactly what Joel's doing now. Fork the okay. collection. So I fork it. Uh, watch original collection. So that I'll tell people if I change it, right? If there's yeah. a change in it. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. That's great. OK. A little bit bigger. All right, so I am now inside of my workspace, which is a little bit messy, I must admit. But uh, but we've got we've got the the collection that we want, so that's all good. Um, and you can see here that we've got all of those uh, different APIs. Um, now the first thing I want to do is to set up my environment, uh, which is right here, I'm guessing, or is it variables? There is actually an environment. Um template in the MongoDB public workspace. So you can create your own environment or you can um, fork. <laughs> you can fork the environment that they set up. And by okay. they, I don't know if it's you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did, but as you can see, I, I'm, uh, yeah, I forgot how I did it. Uh, I yeah. think I've got an environment, but I, okay, I could, but I could just use the variables as well, right? Okay, sounds good. So let's just use them. Um, so the first thing I'll need is to fill in those fields. And uh, the first one is URL endpoint. So I'll just go directly in the data API right here. And I've got this big URL endpoint. Uh, so I can just copy this and paste it over. What's the difference between initial value and current value? Which one should I use? You should um, get in the practice of using current value, but I see from your workspace that you're in a personal workspace, so it doesn't matter to you now, but if you're ever in a team or a public workspace, anything in the initial column is visible to other people. Okay, so I could put this one in initial because I want everybody to be able to share it, but I yes. don't want everybody to see my API key. So I'll put API key in current just to try to use best practices. OK, yep. OK, so uh, next thing I need is an API key. So I'll just go ahead and create an API key. Uh, we'll just give it a name, generate API key. I'll copy this. And um, and you should never close it as fast as I just did, because you can never see it again. Uh, so if I did not copy it, and it happened to me a couple of times. Uh, so if I somehow didn't copy it, all right. Seems like it's good, uh, but then, yeah, okay. Current value, right? Oh, there you go. I know. Uh, okay, so we've got a uh, current value now, so that's good. Uh, cluster name, so we'll use cluster zero and database. Um, well, let's let's try to create a new database. Uh, that was the question. I I can't remember who asked the question, but. Um, Let's try to see if uh, I can create a new database. Uh, we'll call it Postman. And collection. Uh, what are we going to create a database of? Um, friends. Friends. Foods, foods, foods. Foods, foods is better. <laughs> way better than friends. Foods is way better than friends. <laughs> OK. <laughs> uh, and, uh, OK, cool. Now what? Uh, do I need to save those? Yes, 
you do need to save and you're so zoomed in that you're going to have to save through the, you can either like command S, control S, or you can use the oh. three dots. Command S. Did, did that yeah. do anything? It's All right. Yeah. Yeah. I guess it's safe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. I love, I love UIs that let you press on command, uh, command S. Like it's, it's so intuitive and, and you don't need to think about it. it just There's a lot works. of shortcuts that I never use because yeah. I, I live stream. So I'm trying to show people where it is. <laughs> uh, okay. So we've got, everything should be set up so we can try to set up a, our first document. Um, so what it will do is in this part of the body, uh, it's already pre-filled. Um, so we've got cluster name, database and collection. Those will be automatically adjusted, right? Same for you, URL endpoint. Can you really quickly recap the difference between database collection and document and record? Uh, okay, so database is, well, it's a database. So a database uh, in relational world or MongoDB, it's a database. Uh, it's, I don't know, a place to store electronic data. Uh, <laughs> collection is the equivalent of a table. So if you're if you're more familiar with the SQL world, uh, whatever you did inside of a table is now done inside of a collection, and a record uh, inside of a table is uh, the equivalent in MongoDB would be a document inside of your collection. Uh, so in here we've got uh, our database, which was Postman. We've got our collection, which was food, and then we will we'll insert one document in here, which will change. Uh, we'll change. What's your favorite food, uh, Joyce? Sushi. Sushi, and um, here we go. And we'll add uh, Joyce favorite true. Um, so you can just basically add any fields. You can add um, any type of data, so strings, uh, booleans, and so on and so on, just as you could expect for any uh, database here. So if I click Send, and I cross my fingers, I could not send requests to local hosts, select different agents. Ooh, yeah. So hover on the URL endpoint in the request. OK, so I think uh, we needed to have something in current. So go back oh, to, okay. we just needed to, I'm not sure if this is it, but we can try. OK, let's, uh, let's put it in current. Actually, go oh. ahead and hit reset all. Uh, copy the key to your clipboard first. Uh, copy the API <laughs> key to your clipboard, yep. And then hit reset all. And that will move everything from initial value over to current value right to the top right of that little bit. Lower, right <laughs> above the table. <laughs> I really don't see it. Reset all, where's that? Yeah. Reset all, there but, we go. Yeah, it's very, very like, yeah. So now paste it, yep. Uh -huh. So now we have something in current value. I'm not sure if that's right, but remember to save. Save. And then, yeah. Uh, and if I just hit, my camera is right in front of that. <laughs> okay, there we go, yeah. inserted ID. So we've inserted one record inside of our database. Um, so in theory, if I look at Atlas now, I should have a new database, a new collection, a new document inside of that uh, collection. Let's take a quick look. Uh, and, browse collections. Uh, Majid, we are actually, you can Postman, use an environment please. for variables, but in this example, we're using collection level variables. So that's what we're editing, uh, editing there instead of an environment, but environments are also good to use. Yeah, I believe I might have, I don't know. No, there's there's probably no environment uh, by default uh, or that you can fork from the data API because obviously we don't want to put in. There is. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> there is with just the keys, no values. Okay, there you go. So yeah, so yeah. only the, the variable names. And we do have like, uh, thank you. Thank you for trying to clarify this. So the database is the schema. Database is a database is a database in MongoDB and otherwise. And then the collection is a table, yes, in, in SQL terms. And then a record is a row or called a document here. A document, right? yes. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes, you are correct. OK. Perfect. So we're, yeah, thank you for clarifying this. And today uh, I learned that French Canadian spell with British English. We, we actually use a mix of both, uh, which is very interesting. Um, 
So uh, we use OUs, but we use Zs uh, or Zs. Uh, like, anyways, uh, we're we're just kind of a hybrid between British and American people, I guess. Excellent. In, very, very. Clear. In general. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so so we've been able to create our first record. We're we're actually um, I wonder what is brilliant. <laughs> Favorite there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we're able to insert documents. We can find a document. So in theory, if I would just go in here, let's look at uh, the body again. Uh, we'll use the same database and collection. Let's remove the filter. Uh, so this will return the first document that it finds inside of the database. There it is. So we get the document that we just created earlier. Yeah. Uh, if I wanted to um, add a filter that says favorite, come on, false, uh, then it should be returned, well, no records because there's nothing else in there. So we get an all. Uh, so we can actually, uh, you know, just uh, interact with our data as, as you, we would normally do. I have a basic question. How come the um, response from the response on the bottom coming back is just like raw text? How come it's not like a JSON object? Uh, I mean, it's uh, not a word, but like a. Well, it should be JSON, but I guess it's missing a header. A header somewhere. I, I mean, we can make it, Jason, but we can make it. Yeah, but I, that, that's a good question. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I'll have to look if into we that. We get a complex response. It would be nice to like be able to manipulate it, like Jason. Well, absolutely. If we um, actually let's go ahead and change those variables. Let's go back here. And instead of trying to get um, the collection that we just created, we'll, we'll use sample and flicks and we'll use movies. And I'll remove the filter here. And that should return me a much more complex object. Um, so yes, it is definitely not great to be able to look at it like this. So, but we could convert it. Thank you, Postman. So I, we can. I wasn't sure switch if that was. Too. I wasn't sure if that was like a NoSQL kind of thing. Like it, it just comes back not in an object uh, data type. Uh, it sounds to me like it should. Uh, I, I will definitely uh, ask around and see if there's an actual reason. Because sometimes yeah. there are some reason because there are people much smarter than I am that work there. Uh, <laughs> But yeah. uh, but but uh, to me it makes sense as a software developer I I feel like it should be it should be showing me some JSON directly out of the box I just yeah, make it so easier here. LinkedIn user um, Joel did change it in the drop down but like that's after the fact I want to see it JSON immediately. Yeah yeah ideally we want the headers to tell us that it's a JSON um, especially if you use something like that like in uh, uh, if you do a console log if you use it with the uh, the. the or debugging tools of, of Chrome, uh, it'll it'll just output a, a, a blob of text, which is not very useful. So, yeah. yeah. Right. Um, oh, so, another so, question. Yeah. Uh, Rishab is asking, can we use this API to update multiple documents in one go? Well, look at that. There's a update multiple documents right here. Oh, I did. <laughs> Rishab, OK. So. You work at MongoDB. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> so yes, you, you could definitely uh, change multiple documents. Um, so I, I will not do it on this collection because I wanted to eventually try to do a visualization of the document. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, let's just pick. Uh, it doesn't matter. Let's let's change sample Airbnb. Let's look at uh, look at what is there. Um, so for any property house, we'll change the property to I don't know something else. So we can do property. House and we'll change it to. Property whoops. Um, not house. If I run this. Um, 
Well, it didn't work, but <laughs> in theory, it should work. Property type, that's why. User error. Yeah, it always is. I always try to blame MongoDB, but in the end, it's always me. Still an error. <sighs> well, in theory, it should work. Uh, oh, that's that's because oh, I know why. I know why. That's because I'm using the. Um... I know. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so sample and flicks, uh, and I'm actually trying to update something in uh, in another database. So sample Airbnb, uh, yeah, and let's let's do it because who cares about that sample data set? Sample Airbnb, and it was listings and reviews. Command S, and 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 where is it? Update mini. Send. Well, I found one. So it updated one document. I was expecting a little bit more. Um, but it found one. And if we just go back here, we should be able to uh, refresh and see the change to property. Well, yeah. well, <laughs> so in exciting. theory. <laughs> yeah. Wait, do you need a refresh? Uh, no, just hitting apply should actually refresh the data that is displayed. I don't know. I don't know what happened okay, there. Okay. Property type. But, well, we do have a good okay. question from this uh, ringer who I suspect probably works at MongoDB. Um, uh, what's the difference between using the data API versus running simple queries? And I'm guessing you mean like, uh, what what's the benefit of using an API? Well, really, you could. You you could use the, the 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 regular drivers and 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 as I've mentioned at the beginning, that's really the way that um, is is the way that you should access MongoDB. Usually, is through the the native drivers. Uh, it'll it'll you know have all the latest features. It'll support everything out of the box, um, and it, it'll make your everything just work better uh, in general. However, sometimes you cannot use those drivers. So that is when you would really rely on the data API. So it's really for those use cases where you, you just can't. Or if you want to um, do something like explore the data inside of Postman, for example, if you just want to have a tool open uh, and be able to you know, uh, explore some of the data that is in there, it's, it's nice to use uh, Postman to, to do that or to uh, you know, share, your, share your databases and your collections to your teammates, for example. Uh, then it's nice to have access to that data API to be able to access that data. So it's it's for all those cases where uh, it normally wouldn't work with one of those application drivers. And I would say that this is a very common question um, that you just get in general for APIs. And I think exploring, as Joel mentioned, is fantastic. Like explore it with an API, any kind of automation. So a lot of times testers will write out flows um, with the API to run a scenario instead of trying to code it. And then just quick and dirty prototyping, I think, is mm -hmm. um, very common. Yes. Uh, also different, uh, I've seen use cases for migrating data uh, between an Oracle database and a Mongo database. So you can actually use the endpoints to communicate between the two of them. Um, visualization, if you've got external tools. Um, it, last weekend, I was just poking around. I, I needed to brush up my bash skills. Um, and I wrote a, a, a Wordle. Wordle clone, um, and it, it uses the data API in, the, in behind the scenes because uh, because I can't access the, the Mongo da database without having that API. Uh, so that's that's how I managed to do it. You wrote a Bash script to recreate Wordle. Well, yeah, because I can. <laughs> that's yeah. overachieving. All right, I'm, I'm, now we're I'm, playing Wordle. Excellent. I'm, I'm totally going to brag on that one. Here, zoom in like excessively. I'll, I'll learn. OK, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, you're, you're a full screen fan. There you go. OK, we'll, we'll clear that so that it's on top. And so it's a bash script. OK, so what's your first guess? I've never played Wordle, but I heard uh. um, uh, I've seen like the optimal word steak steak. Oh, uh, really? Like the, the this kind word? of thing, not like this kind of thing. No, no, no. The uh, a oh, I e uh, a k e. Oh. Okay. Okay. I don't. Oh, know wait, why is there a bug? I don't know the rules. I don't know the rules. Okay, so, uh, really, I. Uh, 
now it's giving me a bug. So, okay, let's not try to debug that one. Okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we do have more questions about uh, the data API. If I can tear you away from Wordle for a second. Well, first of all, we have nonsensical. I don't know what Willie Geertz is saying. What's PebCAC? Uh, I don't know. Okay, so Pradnya is asking, what is the back end of this API? Do you have a project related to it? It's, uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay, uh, so the uh, the backend of the API. Um, I'm sure there's work. Okay, so basically, um, as part of MongoDB Atlas, there's this whole thing called Realm as well, which is a whole um, a whole extension of of MongoDB Atlas. It it gives you access to like a million different things. Uh, in here, you'll have access to creating a REST API, not a REST APIs, but um, serverless endpoints. Uh, you'll be able to create authentication for your database. And, and that's like a whole topic. I'm not going to dive in too deep into that. Uh, but basically, the data API, what it, how it works is that it uses behind the scenes. So there's a Realm project that you don't see uh, that actually has HTTPS endpoints that are accessible for all of those basic functionalities. So it just that's, that's, what, it, that's what happens in the, uh, in the back end. It just creates all of those endpoints uh, using Realm functions and you can access the data. Hopefully that answered the question like it really quickly because I because it's such a big topic I don't want to yeah. dive into into it too deeply. We have uh, a suggestion from Rex1 maybe it is easy to use Postman. So easy. <laughs> uh, question from Ahmad does this remove the necessity of back end between API and database? So we are it actually just, using Go ahead. It it does not uh, it definitely does not. Um, so you still have to be careful because that API key will give access to the whole project. Uh, not to the whole project, but to the whole uh, cluster. So you have to be careful uh, about how you use that. Um, I mean, if you, have an, uh, if you have a database that you don't mind exposing publicly, then yeah, sure, maybe you don't need it. Uh, I would still go with a backend just for a lot of security reasons. Um, but sometimes it's not possible to have that backend. So in those cases, yes, it could remove the need for the, the backend. You said, no, absolutely not, and then moved on to, yes, it could. Excellent. <laughs> and then, uh, oh, I'm so slow with the messages. Sean is bragging that he got Wordle in two today. <laughs> Kudos, Sean. <laughs> Congratulations. And Arlene was guessing for Wordle. Uh, now, we're playing, <laughs> now we're playing charades. OK, OK, keep going, keep going. Oh, and a compliment for your terminal settings maybe the theme oh wow well, thank you yeah okay um yeah uh it's actually a hyper uh, hyper js hyper js yeah anyway it's a javascript application that is me. um so yeah that's <laughs> so that's kind of what i i was uh wanted to show today um Arlami told me that we could visualize the data now yes i'm putting you on the spot because i but i have no clue where to I'm get started put you with on that. the spot joel we are going to do some front end, front end. Fine. Let's, I, I, let's do it. What are we going to do? Make a table? That's so um, exciting. I, I, Actually, I'm, yes, I'm, like I'm very good at tables. Like, um, OK, so if you yeah. feel confident in your front end <laughs> skills, let's totally make a visualization. I love it. So you clearly have the entire like. Um, UI in MongoDB in the dashboard. We collapsed, expanded, and collapsed the document. You can dig in there. But as you're exploring the API, if you don't want to switch context, I think there is a case for visualizing data because we don't want to, like, what if what if we couldn't get this to return JSON right away, right? And we had to switch the drop down every time. There is a way to render like JSON data in a table or something like that. Okay. Okay. Oh gosh, there's more. I don't know. I'm trying to like say, should we get started with the visualization? We got time. We got time. Okay. So we have some comments in the chat. Uh, Rashab is saying, sometimes I write scripts to insert specific values to documents. Is there a way to avoid that? Write scripts uh, to Jesus. insert values. Um, hmm. Maybe tell tell us more about your use case because we just use the um, we just created a document and updated a document. So like, what is the specific use case? Yeah, so it's, it, to me, it sounds like an update. Um, so you could definitely use it for that. Um, I'm guessing by script, you're meaning it like a bash script. 
um, that would be, if that's the case, that would be like a perfect use case for the data API. So you would you would use a uh, bash script with curl, and you could you know update your documents with whatever value that you want to add to it. Um, so I'm guessing if you want to automate something, but I'm not I'm not sure if what's the the full use case, but. And Shavam is asking for streaming data. Can this be used to have a better visualization? That would be amazing to to kind of um, have something return and then be able to visualize it real time. Today, I think Joel, you're just going to be working with um, your. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Calm down. Yeah, you're sure. Gonna... Let's go. All right, let's do it. That's, that's you're how you break fingers. You're going to be working fingers. with your TTP API, and so you'll be sending a request and then visualizing the response that comes back back from the server. Okay, let's yes. get started. Chippity chop. Chippity chop. Okay, so the way that you're going to visualize data is um, once you get information back from your server, you have access to the tests tab on the top there. So the tests tab on the top is where you can uh, execute JavaScript, like writing tests and asserting what you get back from the um, database. Ugh, or, boring. Uh, well, okay. uh, boring. <laughs> You've just offended <laughs> like half of our viewers. Um, uh, but today we are not gonna be <laughs> testing. We are going to be visualizing that data. And so you can write JavaScript here to basically stuff that response, parse it if you want, but stuff it into some sort of pretty front end. Okay. okay. So um, right, let's do it. I was not at all prepared for this. So we are in fact be, gonna be going to the Postman docs to copy and paste code. So open up a new tab and go to learning.postman.com. I will drop a link for the people that want to follow along. And then in the, can you, yeah, <laughs> every time. In the top right search bar, go ahead and search for visualize. And then the visualing resp visualizing responses is gonna be the first entry. And should I, I accept all cookies or should I read the terms? Um, let's read the terms now in this uh, stream. <laughs> <laughs> trust me, trust me this time. All right, I'm trusting you. Okay, so visualizing responses, you can read more about it, but we're looking for code samples. So <laughs> that's um, what we all do, right? Open up the yeah. docs, find the first code example. Got it. So the first code block is going to be um, an example of your response. So if your response is for your server response is formatted like this, then we could just copy and paste all the live long day. But your JSON object that's returned from the MongoDB database is going to be slightly different. So keep, let's keep that in mind, but let's get some boilerplate in there. Copy that second code block. Is there a copy then, button or should I? It's like, no. OK, no, there's not. command C. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. OK. And then go ahead and paste it into Postman under that tests tab. All and right. if you want to drag that, um, the bottom of that little window down, you can make it bigger vertically if you want yeah your cursor is very small <laughs> yours is very big I know, I know, I know. <laughs> and very okay. pink but uh, okay and one more go back to the docs and we'll get it one more code snippet uh that one right below that that's going to be the javascript that uh initializes the visualizer so copy that to your clipboard and then paste it after the first one Okay. And oh, will it automatically parse it as JSON, even if it comes in as text data? Correct. Yes. Yeah. So that's what that dot JSON will do. Um, you can also do dot text if you want it to treat it as text. But in this case, mm -hmm. we let's take a look at it. So between rows 18 and uh, 20, um, that is initializing the visualizer and the first parameter in pm.visualizer.set is a template. So the template mm -hmm. is the codes block that you paste it above. That's a stringified HTML element, and it's a table. And then you're going to use curly braces to stuff in um, properties. Sounds so good. Let's, that's let's very React-like. React like. JSX-like. JSX-like. Um, yeah. Uh, 
So let's drag that little bar up again so we can see what your response looks like from the um, server to see how the data is formatted so that we know how to reconfigure it and render it in a table. All right. So hmm, I should probably, oh, I'm not at the right place now. OK, let's just take all of this, and I'll go to find multiple documents. OK. And try to send that request. Mm -hmm. I'm getting nothing. Oh, yeah, you're Because I have on... a filter. Yeah. That should return all of the documents in the database, which is probably not the best. Yeah, body link cannot be larger than. Um, Let's actually use, OK, I know what I'll do is that I'll actually use an aggregation pipeline. We'll go one step further um, down. Like so, so one of the ways that you can access uh, MongoDB's data is, um, well, of course, we can go and, and go in database, browse collections. And in here, you can do whatever, pretty much whatever you would expect to be able to do. Um, so see the documents, change them, and so on. But there's also. There is also somewhere aggregation. And in here, you can tweak a little bit your query. This is where you would normally do things like um, group group by what you would do in, in uh, SQL uh, to group objects by something. Or you could add different criteria. Or one of the nice things that you can do is just limit the amount of records that it returns. So that's what we would just limit to 10. Um, and then I can, once again, export the code. So is a aggregation pipeline like a a view of multiple collections, like almost so like a query and then a sub collection? It's it's like a big massive query. So whenever you want to manipulate data, and you can do all of that in, uh, on the database side. Um, so you, you could yeah you could do different things like sorting, um, limiting the number of records being returned. You could do um, uh, what else can you do? You can manipulate the data. Uh, add more fields, transform the fields, like everything that you need to do to your data would be able to do uh, inside of an aggregation pipeline. So it's a full programming language, essentially, that lets you do pretty much whatever you want to do uh, to your data. So, so again, you I, don't have to do it on client side. So you don't have to do it on the client side. So that's the nice thing, uh, really. So you don't need to download all of the records and then manipulate them and resort them inside of, you know, on the client side. Uh, you can do all of that on the database side, uh, benefit from all the indexing that you've set up and so on and so on. Okay. So it's a very powerful feature of MongoDB. Um, again, I could speak for hours about that one alone, but, yeah. <laughs> but I just want to get uh, this, this part right here. Um, right. And, oh, and now I've copied over this. I can just go, where was it? Tanmeo was saying you can have one output be input to another query. Exactly. Like, yeah, like so, a transformation kind of thing. So, yeah, that's uh, actually, I forgot that. But it's like the most powerful feature. Uh, thank you. So basically, it's like a, a stream of, and there's multiple stages. So you've got your, you know, you've got a first stage that will filter out some data. You, you'll have another field that will um, just keep some of the fields inside of your document, another one that would, um, I don't know, add or multiply or, you know, change your unit times yeah. times to uh, date format and another stage and each all of those are streamed one into the other so it's it's a very very powerful tool that you can use um so i've lost my code so i'll just go back here um <laughs> okay and you don't have it. a clipboard or a clipboard tool <laughs> I don't. I don't either. I'm not Stop thinking. judging I'm me today. Like no, no, no. the <laughs> tools and the full screens and. <laughs> uh, but no, I don't. <laughs> All right. Okay. So we've got oh, everything here. Arlami's judgy too. That's a lot of un. Oh, actually, this is true. There's a lot of unsaved tabs. So all those orange dots means unsaved changes. Uh, oh, sorry. Is giving Arlami some anxiety. But and, will will um, that mess up like? Yeah, feel free. You do you, Joel. Don't listen to Arlami. <laughs> uh, I, I have the utmost respect for Arlami. See, 
Ahmad has some experience with aggregation pipelines. Every stage customize the data a little till you get exactly. You can continue to refine uh, the data at every stage. That's that's helpful. And um, Ian Douglas is laughing at you. Okay, sounds good. Let's <laughs> onward to the visualization. <laughs> All right. Uh, so the code is there. Now what? Okay. So let's take a look at the response data and see how it's formatted. All it's, right. That's where we were. Okay. Yeah. So if we wanted to. I can't quite see, but is documents in a, an array? So the first the oh, first thing yes. that we'll get is a documents array. Yes. OK, so we need to at least access the documents property so that we get um, uh, so that we can iterate over it just based on how the code sample is. So after pm.response.json on the bottom, let's go ahead. I don't know. Can you do this? Can you go dot documents? Well, I don't know. We'll try let's it. Try. So let's try. what? What this is doing is on um, that function is going to pass this through to the template on top, and then we'll be able to access information by the properties in the object. So if we wanted a table instead of name and email, we could have like name, actually name is a property, <laughs> Ribera Char Char Charming Ribera Duplex. Ribera Charming Duplex. Yeah, and maybe summary. So let's change, like what's the most interesting information in that object there? Um, description, neighborhood overview, nodes, transit, access, um, I don't know, cancellation policy. I'm interested in knowing that what's the cancellation policy. Uh. <laughs> oh, you're being serious. Okay. Yeah. So go ahead and put, um, <laughs> cancellation policy. Well, you know, here. with COVID and everything, like you never know if you're actually going to be there or not. So you are so practical. And you, then you have the precise spelling of that property. So theoretically, we would loop, I don't know if this will work, but we would loop over every object in the array down bottom in the documents property, and then have a table of the name of the property and the cancellation policy. That makes sense. So we'll know if we can actually should book it or not. Yes. Uh, so what now? So do um, I just uh, Yeah, so save, save? it so I <laughs> always. Yes. And then okay. you send, because remember, this code executes after this main request. And now you still see the pretty view. But if you tab over to visualize, woo, Ooh, that worked. Woo, that's that worked. Nice. That's nice. You did it. Oh, and that's now you can see cool. all the different cancellation policies, too. Yeah. But then that's Flex. not very practical. I need the URL as well. So yes. I, I can also go to pretty, find the listing URL. Yeah. And wrap it around the, oh, or you can add it as a separate, um, yeah. Well, you'll need a new header too. All right, so Willie Geertz is saying, is there a save all tabs in Postman? I suspect there is, but I would have to look it up. Willie Geertz, if you find out if there's a save all tabs, will you let us know? And Ian Douglas was confirming um, they were not laughing at you, Joel. No worries. Lots of support from the chat here. They were laughing at Arlami. <laughs> <gasps> oh, and Arlami okay. has another shortcut. Joel, you love shortcuts. Command D to send. Ooh, that's nice. So if I if I do a change in here, say I I do, uh, I can I can add links. Oh, getting fancy. And oh yeah. Wait till I like pull out my CSS skills like this. Not happening today. Control D, right? Control S and oops. then or Command S oops, and then Command oops, D. Oops, no. Command, say, <laughs> command D. Command D removes a line. <laughs> that's that's me. Come on. Army. Come on, Army. Command D from here adds a bookmark. <laughs> Arlami. <laughs> okay. Is that? Uh, Back in the days, what we did in the uh, chat rooms, like, oh, hit Alt F4 to. <laughs> and now they're saying maybe it's control. Actually, control what R. machine? Yeah. Ooh, URL. Wait, shouldn't that? Oh, I thought you wrapped it around. OK, yeah. URL, URL. Control D deletes. And, uh, 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 uh. I'm, 
I'm not no. not just no, no, no. me Don't anymore. Them, no. that's, that's it. All done. I'm done. Okay. Yeah. Um, so at this point, I mean, like you can, you can, you know, Joel, you said you're not going to do CSS, but you can easily add in a style tag, drop in some CSS, change the background colors. In fact, there's already a little bit of uh, HTML property in there. Here, draw that thing down so we can see that there's a hex code in there somewhere, right? All right. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's a background code. Does somebody want to give us a hex hex code? Do you know a hex code off the top of your head? Yes. Oh, do it, and then everyone guess what color it is. It's okay. like my favorite hex code. Can you read I, it? I, I have no clue why I remember that one, but it's FF2CC9. Okay, if anybody can tell us what that um, hex code color is, without looking it up, on your honor. And in the meantime, uh, Willie Geertz is saying, right-click on a tab header to close all tabs, but then you have the option. Ooh, slick, Willie G. Okay, so you have a guess. I'm not trusting Pink? anyone anymore. Blue or dark green, are any of these correct? Well, let's see. Is it MongoDB? No, it's not. Green. There we go. <gasps> Who guessed it correctly? Willie Geertz did it. I'm not sure if they looked it up though, but that is very, very good. So beautiful. It is, isn't it? It's um, like I've learned this hex code while I was in college learning HTML. And like when you want to try to spot something on a web page, and we didn't have all the nice debugging tools, so I would just always use border FF2CC9. It would just like pop up. Yeah. So, yeah. For accessibility, too. That's why I have my uh, cursor like bright pink so I can see it real easy. And somebody said I could use pink as well. There we go. Not as bright, but it's a nice, it's it's actually a nice Airbnb-ish pink. Very on brand. Okay, so we have our, let me, will you be fooled for a third time, Joel? <laughs> that one, that one seems, seems reasonable. For send? And enter, yeah. Would that work while I'm in here? Change that's... the color and, okay. You did it, command enter. Ooh, command enter. There you go. Ooh, beautiful. So great. Okay. Arlami came through. <laughs> All right. Yeah, and this is just a table, but if you're like good at good at front end stuff, you could obviously make more. Like you could you could actually do some calculations. So we were talking about the aggregation pipeline to do some transformation of the data. Like if there was any kind of quantitative data that came back from the response, you could do your calculations here under the test tab with JavaScript. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Oh, so how would I go and add some some JavaScript? So let's say I want to let's say I'll I'll yeah. <laughs> Are we supposed to be done? So I, I, okay. <laughs> um, but just quickly, I'm I'm curious how how can I add some JavaScript in there? Because uh, I I can definitely use that for something. So say I want to change minimum nights from a string to a uh, to an integer. Yeah. So um, the JavaScript you write under the in the window up above because that's where you're going to be manipulating the data. And so you don't want to do it in your test. It depends on where how you want to manipulate it. But scroll down to the very bottom where you were writing JavaScript or um, there, pm.visualizer.set. Um, mm -hmm. So before row 19, so like on row 18, you can do pm.response.json.documents, and then you can access uh, minimum oh. nights. Yeah. It's just, yeah. And then I, I could do like a map and, and do something. Prefer, and then yeah, I would can, use. You could do a map. You can do whatever you want. Like uh, we've had screens before where we reformat like um, timestamps using moment.js. Yeah, exactly. That's that's what I where I was kind of going with that, uh, trying to change that date into like a whatever a timestamp or something. But yeah. that makes sense. There's a way to use JavaScript in the um, HTML string as well, but I don't know that syntax. Actually, that's in the docs as well, <laughs> so we could do that. Sounds okay. good. I'll look at the docs. So we have a request. Um, is this a request for hex? Can you use? Is that a hex? 
or maybe it's just ooh. Ooh. <laughs> All right, we have a comment or question from Rejun. What happens to the visualization if the cancellation property is not set for any one or more of the documents? Yeah, you mean like if it's null? Cancel is not set for any. Huh. Um, if it's not, so that's one of the thing with uh, MongoDB, right? You're not, you don't have to put in value. So in this case, we would get, because uh, it, it could not be present inside of the uh, of the document. So let's let's try it. Uh, I, my guess would be it will just display undefined because the JavaScript will try to find that property and it won't be there. Uh, but let's. Uh, which one was it? Uh, cancellation policy, right? Yeah. Uh, cancellation policy. We'll just remove it from that record. And I'll go back to where was it? Right here. We'll try command enter. Visualize. Oops. OK. <laughs> Accessibility, poor. We'll, we'll go back to pink, uh, cancellation policy, cancellation policy, uh, response.json, there it is, json.documents. And well, actually, it's return an empty string, which is empty even string. better. Yeah. Oh, I guess that's the templating engine. If it detects that it's an undefined, it'll just leave an empty string. We have. Um... Postman coming in. Hello, welcome, Postman. Uh, Willie Geertz, this is one of our feature requests to add a save all button because I think a lot of times people have like a bazillion tabs open. Um, and Tan Mayo, I'm not sure if this is correct, but like this would be amazing. Wait, you can use the dollar sign curly braces in template string for JS. So is that the ES6 syntax that is uh, usable in the HTML? I'm not sure if that's what Tan Mayo is saying. Um, yeah, that I'm not sure. Be, yeah, that um, I don't even know if that's the ES6 syntax, but that is the syntax in Postman for how you can do dynamic variables in the text areas. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so Joel, um, we are nearing the end of our time together, so we can either continue to like plow through on front end and style it with more colors <laughs> or we could pull more data. I think it's really, see, this is part of what we were talking about earlier. Why do you work with an API so you can explore the data and really understand the data that's coming back? Um, okay. I'm about to stop sharing your screen unless you want to do anything further. Uh, no, I am not going to go into trying to style something and make a, a, a bar graph because because uh, then we're going to be here till tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I think we're good. Okay, okay. So I'm gonna take um, your screen off, and then I'm going to add the chat back. And I did miss some questions, uh, so I'll highlight them. Willie Gears is talking about jQuery. Uh, question from Rejun: Can we use the MongoDB URI connection string? instead of the API key to authenticate? Not in the case of the data API. So the data API specifically uses uh, an API key uh, for its HTTPS endpoints. OK. And then so Claire? So the connection string would be used for um, any other application. So if you use it inside of an application with the driver. OK. And then Claire confirms that yes. So Claire uh, confirms that yes, you can use that syntax in template string. So you can have, oh, so we could have done, um, we could have done, what was it? It was, I'm trying to remember your data uh, object now. Minimum, yeah, so minimum stay, and then like used moment. Yes, I, uh, I think I see what, uh, what you mean now. And, and yeah, that would make sense, I guess. Uh, to manipulate the data directly, um, yes, I guess yes. you could. <laughs> Indeed, I trust Claire. Claire, I just realized that it's a yeah, it's a template string. Yeah, it's handlebars actually. So, all right, so that was uh, pretty good, Joel. We we got a lot done. I learned a ton about MongoDB and also just um, databases in general. 
Um, we do like to close the stream uh, with shout outs, so I'll give you some time to think about whether or not you want to shout something out. Actually, I don't have any, um, I can't remember if I wanted to shout anything out, so maybe, <laughs> let me just recap what we did and then it'll be over to you. Uh, actually, do you want to recap what we did? <laughs> <laughs> We're not paying attention all that time. Well, um, I I will say that I filled in last minute. Arlami was supposed to be here, but please ask him why he is not here um, to participate on this stream. But go ahead. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, it's so basically what we did today is to uh, well we start by creating a MongoDB account on MongoDB Atlas, which is our cloud offering. Uh, created a cluster, so that's like a full three virtual machines running MongoDB, everything pre-configured. Loaded some sample data in there. Uh, so a lot of stuff on the MongoDB side. Um, and uh, and then we've enabled the data API, which is the, one of the newest features where we can create endpoints that can then be accessed from, well, anywhere, uh, anywhere that has internet access, I guess. Um, so we've used it inside of our Postman pu public collection to explore the data. And uh, and then I've learned a ton about visualization, visualization inside, directly inside of Postman, which was great there. Yeah, and um, I said this at the beginning of the stream, but a question that we get very frequently is how do you access a database through Postman? And MongoDB has created an API so that you can access the database through Postman. Um, go ahead and check it out. I dropped a link uh, in the chat to their public workspace, and there's still time to show me your face with the presence if you want to log in there. Um, so next week, um, I believe I am going to be here with Twilio. So Twilio has a new product called Twilio Live. So we will have Postman Live stream with Twilio Live. Postman Live with Twilio Live. I just wanted to have a funny, funny title like that. So next week, same time on Thursday. Um, and now it's time for shout outs. Joel, do you have any shout outs? Yeah, uh, two things that I'd like to mention. And just uh, we, so we just had a big hackathon. I'll actually send you the link so you can so someone can post it. Um, but uh, we had a hackathon last week with Dev.2, uh, where, you know, well, last month we started in December, finished, uh, and, and last week I, I finished a judging. We found some winners, and people came up with like a lot of really cool stuff, really cool projects that were built using MongoDB. Uh, so if you want to see some of the features uh, that MongoDB has to offer, uh, I think there was a lot of showcase, a good, good showcases there. Uh, the other one uh, that I wanted to mention uh, is a group that I'm part of. Uh, we used to travel to conferences and, and speak a lot. Um, not as much nowadays, but I'm, I'm guessing it'll start again soon. <laughs> but it's the uh, Open Source and Mental Illness Group, uh, which is dedicated to um, just changing how we speak about mental health in tech communities. Uh, so I've shared the link as well. So uh, you can check them out. Uh, there's a lot of information on their website. And uh, also, you can support them uh, if you're in the US uh, on Amazon. So every one of your purchases, if you use smile.amazon.com, you can actually uh, put a part of your purchases as a donation. I'm not sure how Smile works, but uh, <laughs> yeah. But, but you can uh, you can donate some money uh, by using that, that, uh, that URL instead. Yeah, OSMI, I've heard really good things about that. So go ahead and check out those two links I dropped in the chat. Um, and I think uh, this was really a fun stream. I know I wasn't supposed to be here, but I'm glad I got to participate. Uh, there's a lot of, I mean, I, I know so many people use MongoDB, but like I feel like there's a lot of similarities between the people that use MongoDB and the people that use Postman. Um, once you learn a little bit about the tech, about the tech, and you see what it can do for your everyday life. I feel like people are really have a lot of love for that tech. So um, if you're new to the Postman stream, we will be back next week. Welcome from the MongoDB side. Um, also, do you guys have a stream that you want to shout out? We have a stream. Check it out on uh, Twitch TV slash MongoDB. Uh, you'll, the schedule is there. Uh, or just follow us on Twitter. We usually post everything there. So uh, MongoDB on Twitter. Yeah, and give Joel a follow. Um, Twitter handles up on the screen. Uh, thank you so much for stopping by and teaching us some things. This was a lot of fun. And um, I'll see everyone next week. Goodbye. All right. Thank Goodbye, you. Bye. Everyone. Goodbye.